Hi folks, it's Pastor Dave with another story from around the campfire. And this one is a very precious memory to me. It happened in my first parish when I was still one of those baby pastors that we talked about last week. And this was in a small town. And a woman came back to town who was moving home. She had gotten married, gone off to the big city, and it didn't work out right for a hundred reasons, none of which were her fault and many of which were pretty tragic. And she was coming back, I would say she left full and happy and was coming back kind of with an empty vessel here, maybe with a few tears inside. And she was coming back home because that was the life she knew and those were the people that she knew. But in the interim, the people besides her family had kind of changed. They didn't know her as well. And when she left, she was a young woman off to start her life and live her life. And when she came back, she was a divorced woman and thus to them, a woman of suspicion. She described as she walked down the street, a lot of people would grab their husbands out of the front yard and pull them into the house, even though she had no interest in any of their husbands, but you could feel the gaze upon her and the suspicion. And for someone who had already been hurt by the world and by her relationships, that was a lot to bear. So one day this woman, when I met her, came into my office and she just laid all this out. She said, here's who I am, here's where I am, here's what I'm experiencing, and I don't know what to do. And here's where the story hit me, is that as a pastor, or maybe as a person of faith, or as a parent, or whatever you are, you're supposed to have the profound things to say, the wisdom, the answer. You're supposed to flip open to a certain Bible story and lay it out there and cure a person's problems, right? Here's the reality. You can't do that. If it were that easy, that's how God would have done it, right? But that's not how God did it at all. And that's not what we're called to do. Instead, I responded in the only way I could. I listened, I empathized, and I said, you know what? I don't know if there's any way that we can solve this. I'm not sure there's anything we can change, but I do know this, you're not alone. And I value you, and I think the people in my church will value you. And she perked up and she said, yeah, well, I don't know that I have that much to give a church. I don't know if I even want to belong. And I said, you don't have to. We care about you and we'll walk with you and we'll value you anyway. And she thought for a second, she said, you know what? I play the piano. I've done that for years. Do you think that people would like to hear maybe a piano song? And I said, sure. Why don't you come on such and such a Sunday and do that? And not much had changed for her the first time she came into the church. But she met people, and she sat down, and she played a song. And at the end of that song, everybody clapped. And this was in a church where you did not clap, by the way. They weren't really accustomed to that for musical offerings, but they did. And in that moment, nothing was fixed, but you could see the filling up from inside of hope and spirit. And it didn't come from a profound answer. It came from a little kindness and the willingness to walk with someone no matter what they're experiencing and tell them even if it's not going to be okay, they won't be alone. That woman actually went on to do great things, big things in the town and in the church. It was amazing how she blossomed after that. And that's not my fault and that's not there. I mean, that's her. But at the same time, it doesn't escape me that in that moment, in that little moment, a bit of kindness and a bit of permission to share who she was and a bit of accompanying alongside was all it took. And that too is, has shaped me to this day. And think about that as you hear the stories of the people in your life and decide how it is that you want to relate to everyone around you.